My Bigfoot sighting happened in Fort Nelson, British Columbia. I was uh, not alone when it happened, and I definitely wasn't really even expecting it to happen. I felt a connection listening to stories on this channel after listening to a few people, and uh, I could relate to a couple times I heard when they said, you know, I just wasn't expecting this to happen. And how some people feel that they got gifts or that they're on an open frequency to be in contact with things that might not be from this realm or from the spirit realm or however you would like to look at that. Me, myself, I was uh, very shocked. I just didn't anticipate it. I'm an optimistic person and uh, I've had my experiences in my life with things that are definitely like poltergeist activity and and whatnot and i grew up on the alaska highway in a very remote area my dad you know he took us hunting when we were little he took us fishing he was an excellent outdoorsman so i'm really familiar with this area and i think that's what shocked me so much and as i had gotten older i'd kind of stepped away from those activities and just forked over all my attention to uh trying to learn how to play music and developed my artist brands as coast and that's what i was focused on you know and i met this girl that i liked very much and we had spent you know seven years just kind of traveling around in this wonderful carefree adventure and uh i would say must be seven years ago now it's 2023 and that's when I saw the creature. We and her were in Fort Nelson and we were relaxing, just going for a drive. We were living here at the time. And we were going down the Clark Lake Road, which is just on the outside of town, like not even two minutes drive from the center of town. I would say roughly two minutes maximum. I mean, you see the bulk plants, you see a couple things on the left and this little sawmill beside the big sawmill that closed. And that's where you're going to turn off you're going to turn off left at this little sawmill if you're coming from town and you're going to head down the gravel road which starts off straight and then goes a little bend down a hill and it levels out and it goes over some tracks then it bends down a hill again and then it levels out and it's just this nice little graded road that leads to a train bridge along a beautiful river our rivers aren't crystal clear with the glacier. They're a little bit silty, but it's still just uh, marvelous. And nothing but bush and trees around. And it's right beside an Indian reserve, actually. And so we had went down to the train bridge to relax and uh, just get out because there's just beautiful things to see around here. And it's really nice when you have somebody that enjoys that stuff and you have somebody to share it with. Otherwise, the town can be kind of quiet. So we were taking advantage of the opportunity that we had each other's company and just showing her all the beautiful little nooks and crannies of where I grew up. And when we were working our way back up the gravel road, and we were nearly out of the road because it's nearly at the entrance of this this road. Like I said, it starts off straight and then it drops down and into this little hill section and right there to the right there's this kind of pull out like a dead end pull out just like for camping you know and it's covered in grass and trees and then behind it is an embankment that eventually just kind of lead leads down levels out and goes to the shore of the river and when we were coming up this hill i mean it was really easy to see the creature and it was about maybe like 50 yards from me it, i don't even know if it was that far I mean, the road is, is really not just, it didn't just go up forever like that. And this thing ran out right at that pullout, I realized when I went back and actually looked where it was and everything. And right away, my brain just said, dear man, as the sun was setting, lighting up the entire hill still, and just like not blinding me or anything, just nice amount of light. This thing ran out and my brain said, dear man. And that's because it was like brown. And it had a white diamond chest, just like a mule deer kind of sort of is how it struck me. 
And that's the only reason that my my brain must have thought that, but it sure was weird that it just automatically said that. And uh, the incredible part about it is when I got halfway across this road, which is kind of like, you know, it's it's really hard clay almost. There's not a lot of give to this road or, or this grade. It got down on all fours and it wasn't slightly hunched like an ape. Like this thing was spread out the entire length of half the width of the road. Because when it got halfway, it just sprawled out and stretched out. And it was like almost perfectly flat. Like it reminded me of more of a cheetah. And it did something incredible while it did it too. Like it really caught me off guard. I was like, am I going crazy? Because when it stretched out like that, it just completely blurred itself. And this creature was moving incredibly fast. You know, it is obviously the ultimate apex predator like todd standing mentions you know like i can verify that and i stopped my truck right where i saw it run across and i just put it in park my girlfriend was really freaked out you know because she saw it she knows what was off and i said don't worry about it just roll your window down and stay in the truck and i put it in park and i just got out on my side on the driver's side you know and like pulled over on the oncoming side of the road so that we were at least some distance from this thing and uh I listened and I didn't hear anything. It was like absolute silence. And I don't know why I did it, but I, I whistled twice. I went, you know, it was just like, hoo, hoo, an actual whistle. And what shocked me then was this thing snorted back trying to whistle twice. Exactly the same I did. I did twice. It did it back twice. And that happened three times. We did it three times, and then those woods just went absolutely silent. Couldn't hear him leaving, couldn't hear him moving, nothing. And you definitely couldn't see him. Like, when you're looking into the brush, you couldn't see him. And so we just left. And the incredible part is, right after we left and got to the highway, we started to head back into town, and maybe a minute down the road, if that, there's this out-of-town ball diamond, and there was, like, a game warden parked there. Why he was there, I don't really know. He was just kind of like watching the highway or doing something. And I stopped and I I told him what had happened. And he just kind of looked at me. And it was it was amazing what he said. He, he said, I don't doubt it. I was just like, holy. I was like, okay then. You know, and I mean, like what? There was nothing else to say after that. And he wasn't really reluctant to go past that. So I, I could tell that right away. But he did tell me, uh, I don't doubt it. So for me, that was just like better than being careless and just walking into the bush trying to make contact with the thing. Because I know deep down, I think these things have the ability and to, to hide themselves from who they want. And when I went back to this place the next day, because it was kind of raining and damp, and it, I think it was in the fall, like same time as right now. And there was no tracks. And then I walked into the bush where I where it just seemed like a bunch of bush. And behind it is kind of like a railroad track and another dirt road. Like it wasn't just complete bush. It was like the road going down to the river, bush to the right of it, you know, on a big embankment and a slope. And then to the left, you're always kind of tied up against the bush until you start getting to the bottom. And where these tracks are, there's like bush to the left of you and then another graded road beyond that and there's train tracks behind this bush so it's kind of like layered like a little forest bed and then a tracks and then another little forest bed and then the road and it just goes up to this kind of more remoter part of the reserve but it is really truly all bush around so i went in to the place that it went into because i have been you know educated on tree stands and and researching the subject myself. And uh, the first thing that I noticed when I look back to the road is I had a crystal clear vision of me in th the car and everything. You can see like there ain't no trees there at all. But when you look in there, you can't see nothing. So when I looked around, it was weird. It was like somebody had logs, you know, just naturally arranged in nature, almost like it was a living room. It would have been a perfect living room place for him to just mope around and and do his stuff and i was trying to see like you know are there tree bends here are these x's made like 
And I did notice some stuff like that in there, you know, and it's just the one thing that was weird to me was this kind of old waterlogged piece of poplar birch. Maybe it was, I don't know, like there's both those trees down there and it was up to my hip and on this other tree with like some type of strong notch or maybe a broken branch or something jagged poking out from it, it you know and this thing was just kind of pierced onto it like like the the stronger part of the the pierce like the sharp branch that was poking out on this strong tree had this kind of weaker piece of poplar i don't think they're the same type of trees and it was just like kind of stuck on there like how you put a wiener on a a roaster and it just gave me a weird vibe when i looked at it and there almost seemed to be some type of tree bends there or manipulation where people talk about seeing stuff and they wonder is that a portal is that a tree portal like and uh you know, you look at these recordings in Alaska and that doctor that recorded these calls and these sounds and finding all this stuff. And there's just some incredible videos that are undeniable that this person didn't craft this together. This is really happening. So I'm so happy you gave me this platform to try to express what I've been holding in for a long, long time and to contribute a truthful story to a, a platform that sounds genuine and truthful to me. When I listen to these people talk on your story, it is just only bells a truth ring and i listened to at least 10 or 12 you know in a row full episodes so for it to be consistent for that amount of time that's a phenomenon you know like something special is happening on this platform and i'm just so grateful for the chance so with that i'll leave it to anybody else who wants to share their story and uh thank you very much for listening to me